Okay, today is going to be lecture six, domain and range. So when we analyze functions in Algebra 2, we're primarily going to be looking at domain and range. That's going to be the most important thing to learn from this. Domain is going to be the set of all x values. Uh, sometimes you call them inputs. So the domain is just going to be composed of all the x values. And typically when we write domain, we're going to be using the symbol capital X, capital X, or sometimes you can use D-O-M of F, which just means domain of the function F, if, if F is a defined function. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking all those X values that are in the domain and we're going to be mapping them to the range. So that leads to my next definition, right? Range is going to be the set of all Y values or outputs. And typically when we do range, there's a couple ways we can write it. We can write it as a capital Y like this. We can write it as range of F where I just write range and then I use the letter F, which stands for whatever function we're using. So we can write it as Y, we can write it as range of F. And another way we can write it is we can take F and we can put the whole set X in there. And if we do that, what that's gonna do is it's gonna map all the X values to all the Y values. So down here, I've got a little diagram that shows you how domain and range really works. I've got to set X over here and I've got to set Y over here. So that's the domain and this is gonna be the range. So what F is gonna do is it's gonna be a function that maps X to Y. So every single X value is gonna get mapped to exactly one Y value. It's actually a function. And then later on in this class, we're gonna learn about inverse functions, which is what you got down here. This is an inverse function. And what that does is it basically goes the other way, right? We're gonna map the range to the domain. So every single Y value is gonna get mapped to exactly one X value if you have an inverse function. So the function goes one way, and then the inverse function goes the other way. Okay, so that's domain and range. When we speak about domain, we're really just talking about all the X values. And when we talk about range, we're talking about all the Y values. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be looking at a couple graphs. We're gonna be finding the domain and the range for all those graphs. Now to find the domain, what you're gonna do is you're gonna follow the graph's progress on the x-axis. When we do domain, you're always gonna be looking at the x-axis. And then if you wanna find the range, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be following the graph's progress on the y-axis because range is always gonna be all those y values. Now, when we do domain and range, we can use set notation or we can use interval notation to describe them. But do know that the domain and range is always going to be sets of real numbers. We're going to be looking at all the real numbers. Complex numbers that you learned last year, we'll be looking at those a little bit too. So down here, I've got this little problem for you to try. What is the domain and range? So what is the domain going to be? D-O-M of F. It's going to be containing all the X value. And then the range that's gonna be the set containing all the Y values. So what is the domain? It's always gonna be all our inputs, right? All of the inputs are gonna be on the left side and all of the outputs or the Y values are gonna be on the right side. So which elements are in the domain? Well, we have negative one, we have positive one, we have positive seven, and 0.5, which is basically one half, right? So I'm gonna put in negative one, let's see, negative one. We're gonna be in positive one seven, and 0.5. So that's gonna be the domain of the function. That's all the X values. And then the range is gonna be all the Y values. So we're gonna be using all the elements from this bubble right here, this set. 
So I'm going to be putting in 149.25. So 149, and then the 0.25. Those are all Y values. Okay, so that's the domain and range. And what is this mystery function? If you think you know what it is, go ahead and type it in the chat box. What is this function? It's going to be one of the parent functions that you learned in the first lecture. It's going to be one of those 10. So what is the mystery function? I'll write f of x equals something. So what is this function? Notice that it's mapping negative 1 to positive 1, and it's mapping positive 1 to positive 1. So those two elements are going to be mapped to 1. 7 is being mapped to 49, and 0.5 is being mapped to 0.25. So what is this function? What do you think? All right, I'm getting responses. Yes, quadratic function. That's it. So this is actually f of x equals x squared. f of x equals x squared. Notice that if you square negative 1, you'll get positive 1. But also, if you square positive 1, you'll get 1 as well, right? So 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is going to give you positive 1. 7 times 7 is going to give you 49. And 0.5 times 0.5 is going to give you 0.25. So that's the function that we're dealing with right there. And the domain is always going to be the set of all x values or inputs. And the range is going to be the set of all y values or outputs. Okay, so let's look at a couple graphs and figure out what the domain and range are going to be on the next slide. Okay, so this slide says for each graph, you're going to want to name three things. You're going to want to name the parent function, the domain, and the range. Keep in mind that for parent function, we're going to be P of X, P of X, equals there. Domain is going to be the set of all x values. And then the range is going to be the set of all y values. OK, so let's look at this first function, y equals x. That's going to be our parent function, right? So the parent function is going to be p of x equals x. Or we can call it the linear function because we get a line when we grab it. So we can also call this the linear function. What is the domain? What is the domain of this function? Well, we need all the x values, right? So to find domain, we're going to be following the x-axis. So looking at the x-axis over here, notice that every single x value is going to have a y value. Every single x value whether it's a negative number, whether it's a positive number, or it's even zero, every single x value is going to have a y value. So all the x values get covered, so to speak. The domain is going to be the set of all real numbers. So I'm going to write all real numbers, all real numbers. Or if you know how to write the real numbers, you know that it's going to be a capital bold R. And that just stands for all the real numbers. So if the domain is going to be the set of all real numbers, what is the range going to be? Keep in mind that the range is going to be the set of all y values. So to find the range, we're not going to be following the x-axis, are we? No, we're going to be following the y-axis. So check out the y-axis right here. That's going to be this vertical axis up here. And it's going to run from all the positive numbers to zero in the middle to all the negative numbers down here. Now, this graph is going to cover all the negative numbers because this graph is going to keep on going down if you go to the left, right? But if you're going to the right, the value is going to go all the way up. We say that it goes all the way up to positive infinity and it goes all the way down to negative infinity. So all the real numbers are going to get covered on the y-axis. So the range is also going to be all real numbers. 
all real numbers. Mm. All real numbers. So you can write it this way, or you can use a cap R like this. Okay, let's look at the next function. This is y equals x squared. This is the quadratic function. So I can write p of x is equal to x squared, or I can write the quadratic function. The quadratic function. So this is going to take every single x value and square it. Notice that when you do the domain, we're following the x-axis, right? And no matter what your x value is, it's going to have a y value, right? Because the graph is going to go all the way to the left, and it's going to go all the way to the right. So every single x value is going to get covered. So that means the domain is going to be all real numbers. But what is the range? That would be different, right? So when we talk about range, we're talking about all the y values. So which y values get covered? Well, notice that graph never goes negative. It never goes negative, right? Because if you square something, you're always going to get either a positive number or zero. So what you'll see is that when this graph is going to be graphed on the xy plane, the graph is going to start at zero, zero, right? So it starts on the x-axis, but then it goes up. It doesn't go down from here, right? It just goes up from zero. So we say that the range is y greater than or equal to zero y is greater than or equal to zero. Why are we using the, the variable y? Well, we're doing range, right? And since range is all the y values, we have to use y. So y can be equal to zero, like it is right here at the vertex, or y can be greater than zero because the graph is gonna go as you go to the left or if you go to the right. It never goes below the x-axis. So that's why the range is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Let's look at the last function on this slide, x cubed. So we have p of x is equal to x cubed. We call this the cubic function, right? The cubic function. And it's got that cubic shape to it. So the domain is going to be the set of all x values, and then the range is going to be the set of all y values. So what is the domain? Well, if you follow the x-axis, which is this horizontal axis right here, you'll notice every single positive number is going to get mapped to some, uh, some positive y value, right? And the point zero, zero, also shows up, that's the origin, that's right here. And then all the negative x values are gonna get covered too by negative y values. So as you go to the right, the function goes up. If you go to the right, the function goes up. But if you go to the left, the function goes down. Does that make sense? Okay. So the domain is also going to be all real numbers because every single x value is going to get covered by the graph. And then the range is also going to be all real numbers, all real numbers, because every single y value is going to get covered. So negative three comes over here, negative two gets mapped over here, negative one is going to get mapped over here to negative one, zero is right here, Positive one gets mapped over here. Positive two gets mapped over here. And even numbers between these whole numbers are gonna get mapped too. So that's why the range is gonna be all real numbers. Okay. And you're gonna to wanna to know this for sure. So write this down. All, all 
polynomials. All polynomials have domain of all real numbers. The domain is always going to be all real numbers for polynomials. So you can have y equals x, y equals x squared, y equals x cubed, y equals x to the fourth, y equals x to the fifth power. Those are all polynomials, right? And they're all going to have domain of all real numbers. But the range doesn't have to be all real numbers, right? The graph could start at zero and just go up. It doesn't have to go down. So that's why the domain is going to be all real numbers for all of these. And you'll notice that whenever you graph a polynomial, that's going to be true. Okay, let's look at the next slide. Okay, now for these two functions, we're going to identify the parent function first. So what's the parent function for this? This is going to be p of x equals the square root of x. So this is the square root function. The square root function. So we're taking numbers, which are the x values, and we're going to take the square root of whatever number we get, and that's going to be our y value. So what's the domain and what's the range? Keep in mind that the domain is going to be the set of all x values. So where do the x values start? They start at zero right here. And then they go to the right. So the domain is going to be x greater than or equal to zero. So the domain is going to start at zero and it's going to go to the right. So all the numbers that are greater than zero are going to get covered and zero is going to get covered. And that's basically it. We can't include negative numbers because the graph only gets to the right. It doesn't go over here, right? But the next graph is going to do that. Now the range, what's the range going to be? What are all the Y values that are going to be covered? Well, looking at the Y axis up here, we start at zero and we go up. We start at zero and we go up. So the range is going to be y is greater than or equal to zero because we start at zero on the y-axis and then we go up. So every single positive number on the y-axis is going to be covered. One gets covered by one, two gets covered by four, and three gets covered by nine. So that's the domain and range for the square root function. Notice that the domain is only defined for numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. In other words, negative numbers are not covered. You cannot take the square root of a negative number and expect it to be real, right? So if I wanted to take the square root of negative four, it wouldn't be two, it would be two i, and that's not a real number. Okay? So that is the square root function. And now let's look at the cube root function over here. This is the cube root, right? P of X is equal to the cube root of X. So you can write it like that, or you can write it as cube root function. This behaves much differently than the last function that we were looking at, right? Let's find the domain and range. What is the domain and what is the range? Keep in mind that the domain is going to be the set of all x values. So we're going to be looking at all the x values on the x-axis to see if they're covered by the function. Now, how does this function behave? Well, it comes in from the left. It comes in from the left. And it goes all the way to zero, and then it keeps going all the way to the right. So all the negative values get covered, all the positive values get covered, and zero gets covered right here, right? So the domain is going to be all real numbers, all real numbers, right? So that's going to be the domain. And then what is the range going to be? Well, all the y values get covered too, right? 
since all the y values get covered from down here all the way to up here, the range is also going to be all real numbers. All real numbers. So see how this is different from the square root function? The domain and the range are totally different for these two functions. And you need to understand that. Because the square root function is going to start at zero and go to the right. Whereas the cube root function takes in all real numbers. So in other words, you can find the cube root of a positive number and you can find the cube root of a negative number. This is going to be negative two and this is going to be positive two when you're taking the cube root of eight. Make sense? I hope it does. Let's look at the next slide. Okay, so now we're starting to get a little bit more complicated. We're going to be looking at the exponential function and the logarithmic function. So what's the parent function over here? P of x is equal to a to the x power, where a is some number that's greater than zero. This is called the exponential function. And what you're seeing in this graph is you're seeing two to the x power. When your number is greater than zero, well, I'm sorry, greater than one, you're experiencing exponential growth. So this is exponential growth, but I'm just gonna call it the exponential function. While this one over here, this is not exponential, it's logarithmic. So this is gonna be log base B of X, the logarithmic function. And if you remember from the first lecture, these two functions are inverses of each other. They are inverses of each other. So we have the exponential function on the left. So let's start off with that one. What is the domain of this function? What do you think? Go ahead and write it down if you think you got it. What is the domain of this function? And what is the range? Keep in mind that the domain is gonna be the set of all X values. So you're gonna be looking at the X axis, but the range is gonna be the set of all Y values. So you're gonna be looking at the Y axis for that. So have you figured it out yet? The domain is gonna be the set of all real numbers, all real numbers. Why is that? It's because every single X value, whether it's negative or positive or zero are gonna be covered by the function. So zero is gonna get mapped to one up here. One is gonna get mapped to two up here and two is gonna get mapped to four up here. And then even negative numbers are gonna get mapped to, right? Negative one gets mapped to one half, negative two gets mapped to one fourth, and negative three gets mapped to one eighth. So every single X value, whether it's negative or positive or zero, they're gonna get mapped to. And then what about the range? What's the set of all Y values? Have you figured that out yet? We're always gonna be using the variable Y for the range. So I'm gonna start off with Y. And for the range, it's gonna be Y is greater than zero. Notice that we have a horizontal asymptote right here. That means that this graph is never gonna cross the, the X axis it's never gonna cross the X axis, but it's gonna get infinitely close to it. That's for sure, but it's never actually gonna be zero. So that's why Y is gonna be greater than zero, but not equal to zero. Let's look at this function over here. What is the domain and what is the range? Take a minute to see if you can figure this one out. The range is going to be easier to find than the domain for this one. I'll just tell you. Notice that we have a vertical asymptote right here. So this graph is never going to cross the Y axis. So what is the domain? Well, 
we can't include any negative numbers, right? We can't include zero because we're gonna start near zero and go to the right. So the domain is gonna be X is greater than zero. We use the variable X when we do domain. So that's why I have the X, not the Y. And X is gonna be greater than zero because the function goes to the right. And then what is the range? The range is gonna be all real numbers, all real numbers. Why is that? Well, when you look at the Y axis, we have to take the set of all Y values when we deal with range, correct? So all the negative numbers are gonna get mapped to, all the positive numbers are gonna get mapped to, and even zero gets mapped to. So the range is gonna be all real numbers. Look at the difference between this function and the last function we did. Can you see the similarities? So domain and range are gonna be very important concepts when we look at exponential functions and logarithmic functions because the exponential functions are gonna have horizontal asymptotes. But the logarithmic functions, those are gonna have vertical asymptotes and those are gonna cut up the domain while these are gonna cut up the range. All right. Let's look at some more functions. This one is the absolute value function. P of X is equal to the absolute value of X. So you can write it that way, or you can write it as absolute value function. What is the domain? What is the range? The domain is gonna be the set of all real numbers, all real numbers. But what is the range gonna be? The range is gonna be greater than or equal to zero because this graph is never gonna go below the x-axis. It starts at zero and no matter which direction you go, you go up. If you go to the right, the function is going up. If you go to the left, the function is also going up. So that's why the range is gonna be greater than or equal to zero. So now let's look at the reciprocal function over here. I have P of X is equal to one over X. And since we have X in the denominator, we need to make sure X cannot be zero because if X is zero, we are essentially dividing by zero and we can't have that. So this graph is gonna have a vertical asymptote it's also gonna have a horizontal asymptote. So what is the domain and what is the range? Be thinking about that and go ahead and write down your answer. See if you can get it before I do. We're gonna find the domain and the range. Keep in mind that the domain is a set of all X values. So we're gonna be looking at the X axis. So it looks like all the X values are gonna be covered except for when we get to zero right here because we have a vertical asymptote right here. So this is gonna be all real numbers. So all reals except zero, except X equals zero. So we're taking all the real numbers and then just throwing out zero because that's where the vertical asymptote is. What about the range? The range is also covered, right? Every single negative number gets covered. Every single positive number gets covered except for when you get to Y equals zero. That's where you have your horizontal asymptote. So the range is also gonna be all reals except zero all reals except y equals zero. So we can't include x equals zero in our domain and we cannot include y equals zero in our range because that's where the asymptotes are. 
Okay. So that is the reciprocal function. Let's look at what we have on the next slide. All right, so now we have some really strange functions and some of these are not even functions. How about the first one? This is gonna be P of X equals C, where C is just some number. This is called the constant function, the constant function. It's really just a horizontal line when you look at it. So what is the domain and what is the range? Let's try this one. The domain is gonna be the set of all X values. Every single X value is gonna get covered. So the domain is gonna be all reals. You can write all real numbers or you can write the capital R. It's basically the same thing. But what is the range? Notice that we only have one Y value and that's gonna be four because every single point on this line is gonna have a Y value of four, right? That kind of makes sense. So the range is only gonna be Y equals four. There's no other number that's gonna be in the range except for four. Let's look at this function. This isn't even a function because it's gonna fail the vertical line test. But this is X is equal to three. X is equal to three. You get a vertical line, a vertical line. So for this uh, graph, what is the domain and what is the range? Well, since the domain is gonna be all the X values, the only X value that's gonna show up is gonna be three. So the domain is X equals three. But notice all the Y values are gonna get covered up. So the range is gonna be all reals. The range is gonna be all reals or capital R. Does that make sense? Only one of the X values gets covered, but every single Y value is gonna get covered no matter where you are on the Y axis. So that's why this one is so strange. The domain is only gonna be one of the numbers and that's X equals three because this point is three comma zero, right? This point down here is three comma negative three. And this point up here is three comma three. So you can see how three is gonna be the only X value. So that one's kind of strange. And then looking over here, the circle is not a function either. It's, it's just a circle. It's a circle with a radius of two. The radius is gonna be two. So what is the domain and what is the range? Well, looking at the x-axis, we go from negative two to positive two. So I'm gonna write it this way. X is gonna be between negative two and positive two because all the X values are gonna be going between negative two and positive two. And we're gonna include those numbers, negative two and positive two. So all the X values between here and here are gonna get covered. And the range is very similar, right? If you look at the Y values, every Y value from negative two to positive two is gonna get covered. So the range is also gonna be negative two to positive two. So I hope that makes sense. Now you can write it like that, or you can write it like this, the closed interval from negative two to positive two, inclusive. And we use square brackets because we are including negative two and positive two. We're not using parentheses. So that is domain and range. Let's look at the next slide. Describe the domain and range for each given graph. 
So we're going to be looking at the set of all x values, and we're going to be looking at the set of all y values. For the first one, this is just a line. All the x values get covered. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. And all the y values get covered too. So the range is also going to be all real numbers. Let's look at this next one over here. What is the domain and what is the range? The domain is going to be all the numbers on the left side. So we're going to have the set 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's going to be the domain. And then the range is going to be all the elements on this side. So A, B, C, and D. Okay. Now let's look at this graph over here. We just have a bunch of ordered pairs or dots, right? The domain is still going to be the set of all x values. So which x values show up? We have negative 3 over here. We have negative 2 right here. On this y-axis, we have a point right here. The x value is 0. And then over here, we have an x value of 2. So that's the domain. But what about the set of all y values? What y values do we have? Well, starting from the bottom and going to the top, we start off with negative 3. That's down there. And then over here, we have negative 1. Negative 1. And then on the x-axis, your y value is essentially 0. And then this point right here has a y value of 1. So negative 3, negative 1, and 0, and 1. That's going to be the set of all y values, or the range. So this is three different ways that you can write a function. You can graph it, like we did on the left. You can do a mapping diagram, like we did in the middle. Or you can write it as a set of ordered pairs, like we did on the right side. Let's look at the next slide. Find the domain and range. What is the domain of this function? All the x values, right? This is called the sine function. f of x equals sine of x. When you do pre-calculus, you'll learn that this is actually a trigonometric function, or a trig function for short. So which x values are going to get covered? Basically, everything from 0 all the way to 2 pi. So the domain is going to be from 0 to 2 pi. So this is the way I'm going to write it. x is between 0 and 2 pi. x is greater than or equal to 0. x is less than or equal to 2 pi. So if that's true, what's the range going to be? The set of all y values, right? That's going to be between something and something. Now, how far down does the function go? It goes all the way down to negative 1. But it goes as far up as positive 1 right here. So y is going to be between negative 1 and positive 1. So we can write that as negative 1 to 1, or we can write it, the domain, as 0 to 2 pi. And we're going to close that up. OK, looking at this next function, what is the domain and what is the range? Remember that the domain is the set of all x values. And when we're dealing with a polynomial like this, the domain is always going to be all real numbers. You can tell because every single x value is going to have a y value. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. All real numbers. But what about the range? What's that going to be? Notice that the function goes as far down as negative 1, but then it goes up. So y is greater than or equal to negative 1. 
that's going to be our range. We can write it like this, or we can write it like this, where we go from negative one to positive infinity. The negative one is going to be included in our answer. That's why I have a square bracket on the left side. But on the right side, since positive infinity is not exactly a real number, we cannot use a square bracket. So we're going to use a parentheses instead. So y goes from negative one all the way up to positive infinity on the y axis. So that is domain and range. Let's look at the next slide. This is a very complicated function to graph. This is y equals sine of one over x. What is the domain? What is the domain? And what is the range? Well, when we do domain, we always look at the x-axis, right? This function goes as far right as positive one, at least the way it's graphed. And then it goes as far left as zero. But is zero gonna be included in our answer? No, because if you let X be zero right here, you, you're gonna have one divided by zero. That's not good. So we cannot include zero in our answer. So X is gonna be greater than zero, but it's gonna be less than or equal to one. So we can write that as interval notation or we can write that as set notation from zero to one. We're gonna include one in our answer, but we're not gonna include zero. And then what is the range gonna be? The set of all Y values, right? Where do the Y values start and where do the Y values end? That's the question. This graph is gonna go as far up as positive one. It doesn't go any farther up than positive one. How far does the graph go down though? It goes all the way down to negative one. So Y is gonna go between negative one and positive one. It doesn't go any further than that. So that is the range. You can write it like this, or you can write it as the interval from negative one to positive one all numbers inclusive. Okay, so that is a very strange function. And when you graph it in Desmos, what you'll see is the graph is gonna oscillate between negative one and positive one all the way to the Y axis. And then once it gets to zero, you're gonna have an, an infinite number of oscillations, which is very strange, but that's how the function behaves. That is sine of one over X. Okay. And for these last five, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding the parent function, the transformation and the domain and range. Now I'm only going to do the odd ones. You can do the even ones yourself because I'm kind of running out of time here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going to Desmos. We're going to be going to Desmos our graphing calculator, and we're going to be graphing every single one of these functions. We're going to be taking a look at the graph and seeing what the domain and range are. But let's start off with number one. Notice that this is an absolute value function. So this is P of X equals absolute value of X. And one thing that I notice about this function is you have a minus three on the inside. What does that minus on the inside mean? Do you remember? If you have a minus on the inside, that means you're going to the right. You're going to the right by three, basically. That's the transformation. So what is the domain and what is the range? We're gonna graph this function and we're gonna see what that is. So let me move on over to Desmos. And I'm gonna graph the function y equals the absolute value of X minus three. 
Okay. So looking at this graph, we get that classic V shape for our absolute value function. What is the domain of this function? Well, it's all real numbers, right? Because every single X value that I put into this function is gonna give me a Y value. So the domain is gonna be all real numbers. All the X values get covered. But what is the range? Which Y values are gonna get covered? Well, we start at zero and we go up. We start at zero and we go up. The graph never dips below the X axis. So we can go back to this slide and we can say that the domain is gonna be all real numbers, but the range is gonna be Y is greater than or equal to zero. We can write it like that, or we can write it as zero to positive infinity. That is the domain and range. Okay, let's move on to number three. Number three is the square root function, but it has a negative on the outside. So our parent function is gonna be P of X is equal to the square root of X. It's our square root function, but we have a negative on the outside. What does that mean for the function? What is the transformation of this function? Remember that if you're multiplying by a negative number, and in this case, it would be negative one, we are reflection, re, reflecting, reflection over the x-axis. Reflection over the x-axis. So that is gonna be our transformation. What is the domain and what is the range? That's what we're gonna figure out next. So let's move on over to Desmos. We're gonna get rid of this function and we're gonna graph y equals negative square root of x. So notice that we're taking our square root function and we're flipping it over the x-axis. So what is the domain for this function? What x values does this graph cover? It covers zero and everything to the right of it. Zero and everything to the right of it. So X is greater than or equal to zero. But what about the Y values? Let's take a second look at that graph. I want you to look at the Y axis this time. This function starts at zero and it goes down from there. It goes all the way down. So as you go to the right, the function gets more and more negative. It's gonna go all the way down to positive infinity, uh, sorry, negative infinity. It's gonna go all the way down to negative infinity, right? So how can we write this less than or equal to zero? So that's the way I'm gonna write that. You can write it like this, or you can write it as negative infinity, zero, and we'll stop right there. And then the domain, we can write that as zero to positive infinity. All right, let's look at number five. Five is y is equal to negative three to the x minus two power. We have a number raised to a power. So this is the exponential function. P of X is equal to A to the X power. But what's going on right here and right here? Since we have a minus two next to the X, we are moving to the right by two. We are moving to the right by two. But what does this negative mean? Well, just like in number three, when we had a negative on the outside, we are reflecting we are doing a reflection over the x-axis. That's what that negative is gonna mean. So we're gonna figure out what the domain of this function is and what the range of this function is. Okay, let's graph it on Desmos and see what it looks like. Okay, let me get rid of this. And we're gonna graph y equals negative three to the, to the x 
minus two power. Whoops, that is not what I wanted. <laughs> um, minus two. No. Let me try it this way. X minus two. Okay, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So looking at this function, which X values get covered and which Y values are gonna get covered? Think about it. We're dealing with the X numbers for the domain, right? We come in from the left. So we're going all the way from negative infinity and then we cross zero and then we go to the positive numbers and we go all the way to the right to positive infinity. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. All real numbers. But what is the range? The Y values are going to start at zero. But since we have a horizontal axis right here, or horizontal asymptote, it's never actually going to be zero. It's going to get close to zero. Check out that Y coordinate. it goes all the way down. And as we go to the left, it's gonna approach zero. So how can we write this? We're gonna write it as Y is less than zero. Or we can write that as negative infinity to zero. Don't include the zero. So I'm gonna put a parentheses and that is it. That is domain and range. You're pretty much looking at every single graph that I give you, and you're trying to figure out which X values get covered and which Y values get covered. So for your homework today, you're going to be working on the domain and range classwork. Domain and range classwork. That's going to be today. On Wednesday, we're going to be covering continuity. Continuity. So I will see everybody on Wednesday. If you have any questions, you can put them down in the chat box or email me later, and I will get to those questions. So class dismissed. I will see everybody on Wednesday. Have a great day.